Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with more old world content. Okay, as we know, Games Workshop are still kind of dragging their feet in relation to giving us releases for the old world, but we have heard through the grapevine that the the Dwarven Hold Arcane Journal will be sometime in the near future. So I'm gonna try and get a bunch of Dwarf videos ready for you guys. So if that's the army that you're excited about and you wanna follow along with and build a force of, that there will be a host of videos on my channel ready for you to do that. Now we've already done a Dwarf Lord on the channel, but I thought I would do one of the miniatures that I've always wanted to paint, but Games Workshop haven't really provided a proper model for them in quite a long time now. And that is a Dwarf Ranger. So I'm going to be leaving hev leaning heavily once again on Proxy Wars. They have been a fantastic help and are the sponsor of today's video in helping us get our hands on suitable miniatures to represent our armies for the old world. So I'm gonna be grabbing some of the Dwarf Ranger models that they have available on their website and be painting up one of those in today's video. I've already seen what it turns out like and I'm quite proud of what it does look like. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to seeing what it looks like. I said looks like about nine times there. That sounds a bit weird, but. We shall soldier on. Before I get into the video, I just wanna say a big thank you to all of my patrons. Without you guys, I could not do this crazy channel or continue making YouTube videos. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. If you're interested in getting involved or checking it out yourself, there is links down in the description below. Access to private Discord server and a couple of extra vlog style videos every week are just two of the awesome benefits of getting involved. I'm sure there's a tier out there for everyone. Except for free, free tier, that gives you nothing. All right guys, thank you so much. And let's jump in and get this Dwarf Ranger painted up. Okay, so this is what I got off of Proxy Wars. It is two bags of five Dwarf Rangers, what I shall be using for my Dwarf Army. My Dwarven Holes Army. Really cannot wait for that Arcane Journal to appear, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, and we can move on and progress a little bit further with the Old World re-release. Because right now it is moving at a snail's pace, and it's killing me. As you can see, these models are beautifully sculpted. They print just perfectly. Like I said, Proxy Wars is the idea behind Proxy Wars is it is like a third party reseller kind of thing. The concept behind what they do is they buy the licensing off of a bunch of different 3D modelers to sell their prints as physical items. So if you do not own a 3D printer, that is not a problem at all. So that means you can go through their entire host, their entire catalog, pick a few nice pieces out, Place the order and it'll cost you uh, not too bad at all. They do have very, very reasonable prices for their miniatures and have them delivered to your fully printed, cured, supports removed and all those other bits and pieces. So all I need to do is remove any extra little supports that got left behind in the nooks and crannies. I choose the tweezers and pluck those out, glue them to some bases, spray and get started. So here's what my squad of 10 Rangers is going to look like. This is the particular scope that I decided that I was going to do for today's video because it's awesome. It's, just, it's everything I've wanted from Dwarf Rangers for so many years. Games Workshop did used to sell Dwarf Rangers in metal form, but they haven't made those in 20, 25 years maybe. So yeah, I don't know whether they'll ever bring them back out or give us a new squad of them, but for now, these will more than do for me. So I got the miniature sprayed black and then sprayed gray sear, and now I can be in the process of adding all of my base coats. And as you guys who've watched a bunch of my videos know, I like to use contrast to get base coats on my miniatures very, very quickly. So the first thing I want to do is start with Gulliman Flesh and apply that to whatever skin is actually showing. With dwarves, it's usually not a lot. You get a little bit of their face, they usually have massive beards covering up the rest of it. Make sure to look in their beard, you will find a lip in there usually, so make sure you do get that. And then of course, his hands. Everything else is covered up by cape and armor and boots and all that cloth, stuff like that. So it's a very quick step but it's pretty cool. One of the extra bits that I do like that they did provided with these Dwarf Rangers is the option and facility to put great weapons on them. They give you the part as a separate thing. So like I said, the option in the book is to add a great weapon or not. So it's nice to be able to choose. If I'm going to have this squad run with great weapons, I can just glue those bits on the back and paint them up. If I'm not, then I just leave them off. And I like that a lot. Kind of helps that whole WYSIWYG aesthetic. Gorgrunt of Fur was then brought in for the, he's kind of got like a leather jerkin type thing on. So I'm gonna paint that Gorgon to fur. There is cloth bits as well showing through on his trousers and out through his sleeves. And I think that's where you would go for your clan colors. So if you have a dwarf army, you wanna add this unit into your force and your force is, let's say primarily red. This is where you would paint the red. For me, I'm just gonna go with the yellow tone, but a really dark kind of mustardy yellow because I want it to blend in with that whole kind of natural nature style aesthetic. So I'm gonna go with Nasdred yellow. 
this does work a treat for this particular thing nas drag yellow is one of those contrasts which i think is very underrated so if you guys do not have nas drag yellow in your collection and you do like those kind of more earthy tones i would pick it up if you've got a little bit of spare cash or need to bulk up an online order a little bit more for shipping or something maybe consider a pot of this Okay, so with Nasdrag Yellow applied, it's now time to go in for a little bit of Creed Camo. That's going to be the base contrast color that I'm going to use for his cloak. Now, of course, just like kind of like Wood Elves, if you've got a specific season in mind for your Rangers, you could, of course, change up the cloak color. So if you're going for autumn colors, perhaps they could be kind of an orangey brown color. You could do it as a snow, you know, whites or blues. It's kind of up to you what you want to do. But for me, I'm going to go with a traditional cloak in kind of a rich green color. Starting to come together already. So a bit of Black Templar for his black boots. And I decided that, you know, dwarves, very fine craftsmen, everything they basically own, wear is of the highest kind of standards. So I'm going to go with a beautiful black leather belt and the pouches on his hip as well as those black leather. Super quick and easy. They want their equipment to last. These guys might be rangers for 30, 40 years of their life. So their gear has to last. Snakebite leather was then brought in and I'm going to use this for the wood on the crossbow. I want it to be a nice pale wood. Nothing too dark. Like I said, natural tones. I want this guy to literally look like he belongs out in the wilds. Think like Aragorn, but as a dwarf. If Aragorn was mixed together with Gimli, this is what you would kind of look like. Perhaps, I don't know. But yeah, just a nice light brown wooden color. You don't want it to be too dark. At least I don't want it to be too dark. You could do it as a darker brown if you want to. It's your toy. And then from here, we are just going to use Skeleton Horde. And we're going to use it for some of the other uh, details left over on the miniature. So the bow on the crossbow and his beard. I want him to have kind of a paler beard. I can't quite remember in the lore if rangers are considered to be some of the older wiser dwarves or if they're like the younger beardlings they start out and they do kind of ranger stuff they like to venture out into the wilds and see a little bit of the world before they get kind of grumbly and old i think it's the the former's or the latter i think it's the, the younger ones so i'm gonna go for a nice kind of blondie beard this guy's quite young Aaron is one of his first adventures maybe lead belcher was then brought in just for some of the silver details so he's got a couple bits hanging out of his beard as is tradition some of the mechanism of the crossbow, the tip of the bolt, his belt buckle, and obviously he's got a nice cup hanging from him. And like I did think about doing the cup with like gold trim and accent and stuff. And if I had have decided that it's the older dwarves that were rangers, then I probably would have given him a more ornate cup. But since I think this guy's a beardling, maybe he hasn't earned his glorious tankard yet. He just has a simple kind of traveling cup with him now. So I just kept it as plain silver. After that, we grabbed some Seraphim Sepia and we applied this all over the model to help shade it all down, blend all those colors together and give us a beautiful staging post for starting the layering process. Like I said, this is for a dwarf army. This is not a competition piece. This is not entered into a painting competition. This is not a character. Therefore, I have to paint a lot of these guys up and I want these schemes to be fast and accessible. So after the shade has dried and I finished basing him up, except for grass tufts he looks something like this so we're going to very quickly go through and layer it up most of the stages are going to be one stage there's going to be a couple of things we're going to focus on more so for instance cadian flesh tone i'm going to use to highlight the skin and dwarf faces are like you know they're like rock almost they're so well defined all the creases all the, the, the kind of nooks and crests like painting an orc face are so great to paint because they're so expressive and it's very easy to find where you're supposed to highlight there's no like beautiful smooth elven skin where you've no idea where highlight's gonna go but once you apply that first coat i find it to be a little bit too pale for a dwarf he doesn't look nearly like he's had enough port in his life therefore we're gonna throw a little bit of berserker bloodshade down across all of that skin this just adds a bit of warmth back into it like i said this guy is not out under the mountains toiling away in the mine he's out in the sun dwarves generally don't do well in the sun so maybe a touch of red to his skin will make it be a little bit more natural as you see, it's not a crazy amount. I'm not trying to tint it red or anything. But from there, then we go to Kislev Flesh and add the final highlight to his, his kind of face, nose, cheeks, eyebrows, all those kind of bits. Just the final highlight, little touch highlights on all those raised bits. It's going to work a treat. Now, like I said, this is quite a lot of layers because I quite like painting skin. 
the rest of painting him is going to be one layer, except for the cloak. I'm going to do two layers on the cloak because I want it to stand out as well. It's kind of a key feature. He is already starting to come together. Once that face was painted, I did would genuinely really love how this guy was turning out. It's always great when you get to that point in painting something when you know you're kind of on the right track and you know you're going to be quite proud of what you complete at the end of it. It kind of invigorates you to power through and get more done. Averland Sunset is what I use to highlight up the Nas Dreg Yellow. And as you can see, it's just choosing the direction that the fabric is kind of folded in doing some light scratchy highlights and you don't need to do the underneath or all the recesses and stuff this is just where the light is going to catch it you're trying to like break apart all those different details again so you don't need to go crazy or worry about filling it all in just looking for those raised details from here we're going to go for more and fine brown and that's for that jerkin we talked about underneath that leather bit and just like before we're just going to aim for those kind of raised areas obviously the shoulder bits are exposed to the sun so they're going to get a nice little highlight but when it gets underneath underneath the crossbow and stuff like that you don't have to worry about it as much okay now he is really starting to look clean and fresh now so we're going to go for the first coat on the clay cape and that's going to be wah flesh like I said, I'm going to go for some scratchy highlights, but I genuinely want to get almost kind of nice coverage with this. I want to get rid of any of the blotches that the contrast and shade has left behind. And we want to leave that like shaded contrast in all the recesses and all the folds and make the rest of the cape kind of jump out at you. This is going to be a key feature, especially from my point of view as the person using this model. If I push a squad of them forward, the green capes are pretty much all I'm going to see. So I want them to look nice so I get something enjoyable to look at. You on the opponent's side can enjoy the face and the weapons and the crossbow and all those because that's going to be facing towards you. Strachan Green was then brought in as the extra highlight for the cape. Not entirely necessary. If you're following along with this video and you don't want to go the extra mile, that sounds like I'm making fun of you or you just don't have the time to do in the extra stage, you can of course leave this out. I just, like I said, wanted the cape to stand out a little bit more. So I went for the Strachan Green. We are closing in on the finished product of this model. It was very kind of simple to paint, very enjoyable to paint, and absolutely no stage of it. Took a lot of time, so I think I would be quite comfortable getting a squad of 10, 20 of these guys done in a couple of days of painting. Here I am with the Ushapti bone, layering up, of course, the rope on the crossbow, and his beard. I think this was a particularly nice thing. Skeleton horde, sepia wash, and then Ushapti bone for like the the highest points of strand on the beard it made that whole face area pop looks really cool so happy with that the last thing we're going to do is grab a little bit of iron breaker just to very briefly highlight those metallic areas his little tankard the kind of metallic bits in his beard his belt buckle and some of the mechanica mechanicus mechanism parts of the crossbow <laughs> And with that, we have a couple of pictures as a kind of grand reveal of this miniature to see what he would look like, first of all, in a kind of posed picture. And then I've got a couple of them on a green mat so you can see what he will actually look like on a gaming table. Suffice it to say, I would be pretty proud to have this guy feature in my dwarf army. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Make sure you do check out Proxy Wars. If you are a fan of the old world and you're struggling to get miniatures, they have a huge selection at great prices. I do thoroughly recommend them. There will be links down below to check them out yourself. And there we go, guys. The first of 10 Dwarven Rangers is now complete. Like I said at the beginning, I'm really happy with how he turned out. I'm very excited to get the other nine painted up and have a beautiful unit of rangers. I would actually love to do an entire dwarf force based around Bugman, Bugman's brewery, which he had a whole host of rangers fighting for him. Bugman's rangers to be precise. And I just think that would be an awesome force. Now, of course, in the current timeline, I don't think Bugman has been born yet, or if he is, he's just a beardling. We shall see. Maybe he'll show up um, like Thorgrim is showing up or Ungrim is showing up back in the uh, old world. But I guess that's something we'll have to wait and see. Okay, guys, I hope you learned a few bits and pieces about painting dwarves in this video. If you did, 
make sure you let me know by giving the video a like, ask me any questions you want in the comments and making sure you're subscribed. Those three little things cost you absolutely nothing, but they make all the difference to the support and success of this video on this channel. So please do take two seconds out of your day to do those three things. They cost you nothing. If you do want to help a little bit more, there's links to things down below. Like I said, my uh, Patreon and affiliate links. If you want to buy some stuff for the old world, games workshop stuff, paints, tools, check out my Element Games link below. You can get up to 15% off your purchases and I get a nice little kickback. It doesn't cost you anything extra. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to me drone on and on. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.